Hello and welcome to ADTV and today you catch up with myself and Phil out on a very very windy almost stormy looking evening and we're actually targeting eels. I hold my hands up I have never actually gone out specifically to catch an eel and I'm sure in today's fishing scene there's quite a few people who will be the same and haven't gone to catch them so you're probably in a minority, I Phil. I think most people go out to avoid they, catching <laughs> I go out so. to avoid them, so <laughs> you're one of these people who go out. But first of all, that's going to be my first question to you. As someone who's a multi-species angler, you go out and catch all sorts of fish. What turns your attention to eels at certain times of the year? I think for me, as an all-round angler, a really big eel is the holy grail. Right. Um, they just seem a very rare fish. Um, potentially a five, six pound eel. It's 50, 60 years yeah, old. Mega. Um, and it's that they can be hidden in plain sight and that's the thing I like, a really big one can turn up anywhere and it's just, you know, those things that are the hardest to catch yeah. for me <laughs> yeah. are the ones that give no. you the most satisfaction. Yeah. I do completely agree with you there, the fact that, you know, you know, no one is specifically stocking eels in lakes as far as I'm aware, so you don't know the biggest fish in there that's, that's called a certain name or, I mean, there could be no eels in there, you don't know, so it is off the beaten track. But when you turn up to a lake, for example, carp fishing, you kind of know the best possible outcome. Yeah. You know there's a particular fish at a certain weight. Um, you turn up at a lake eel fishing, it might never have been eel fished before, and you don't. You could catch a British record. Yeah. You, you don't know what do the potential like is. Yeah, I do see the appeal on that side of it. So for anyone who wants to go out and have a go at their own sort of off the track eel fishing, what areas, lakes or rivers would you, you go and target? I find that the, the eels that I'd want to fish for, the bigger eels, tend to be in the still waters, in the lakes. Yep. Um, a good starting point would be gravel pits that are near rivers. Okay. I think they make their way into the lakes through the rivers, yep. but they seem to grow bigger in the lakes. Probably more food, I'm guessing. It could be a lot richer, normally a lot more silver fish in there. Yeah. But a, a good starting point would be somewhere near a river system in a gravel in pit. In a gravel pit, that's good. So once you find a lake you want to go and actually target, whereabouts in that lake are you going to fish? Um, the margins have always been quite kind to me. If you can find some deeper margins with some cover, yep. I think the eels quite like snags. Saying that, I have caught them out in open water. I can think of a situation where I've accidentally caught a big eel on tench gear fishing up on the gravel bars. Right. So I've gone back in on a, on a session a year later, targeting eels on the same spots as I caught that one. Yep. They're incredibly good hunters. Yep. They're, when they're on the feed on these muggy, stormy <laughs> summer nights, if you've got a, a bait out there that they find attractive, yep they'll normally find you. I mean, it's worth saying it, they are, a lot of people do is how predatory they are. They will physically go and find it, won't they? Yeah, as long as you're not fishing somewhere ridiculous like in the middle of a weed bed, as yeah. long as you've got your bait presented fairly neatly at that witching hour when they're they'll hungry, they'll normally find you. <laughs> good, good. And then let's go on to a bit more serious stuff then. So first of all, we'll start with the tackle outside of the water. So what are you using for them? Um, You've noticed my rods are quite old rods I've yep. got there. They're some old, old, old carp rods. I think they're about a two and a quarter pound test curve. Um, and I'm not doing it to look super cool and old school. Ah, see, I thought you were doing it for <laughs> eel points. <laughs> um, I'm doing it because um, slightly old carp rods I've got are more through action. Right, okay. I find most modern carp rods are designed for distance fishing yep. and, and very tippy. Um, and eels got a very distinctive fight. They, they can swim backwards and they're very aggressive, um, constantly rolling. Yep. And I find having a, a rod that's sort of stout enough to stop them from reaching snags and, and losing them, but forgiven enough to absorb all those lunges. lunges. And that's where these slightly softer carp yeah, rods no, come that in. That makes sense. And then basically you're matching a nice reel up to, to suit those. And then you've got some real heavy braid on you. Yeah? Um, yeah, I fish 40 pound braid. Braid is good for the bite detection. As yeah. soon as they move off with your bait, um, you know, they'll, you'll get a bite. Um, I fish an open bail arm yeah. with a drop off style indicator underneath the reel and they can just take the braid off the reel free running and feel no resistance. Yeah. It's, it's definitely worth mentioning, although we said they're very predatory, if they feel it, they, they will drop it and let go. So that probably is mirrored at the other end of your rig, yeah? Have you got a running rig? Yeah, it's a completely free running rig. Another thing that's worth mentioning is on my rig, I have a, a little stiff boom section out of a sort of 15 or 20 pound mono okay. with two high performance swivels at each end. Right. Um, the reason is when the fish is rolling, if those swivels don't turn under pressure, they can twist up your rig, yeah. and as it's twisting your rig, it'll break. Okay, I'm with you. So yeah. um, it's, it's important that you get some swivels that do actually turn under pressure. Yeah. I like that. So it's actually spinning with it as it's spinning. And that's stopping what I'm sure everyone's seen is that like eel tied oh, in a ball. It's and awful, it comes yeah. yeah. So that is a very good tip. So spin on there. And then going down a section further, you've actually got wire on. Yeah, definitely. If I had to give one tip for eel fishing, for big eel fishing, is make sure you use wire. Okay. I mean, 
I learned the lesson quite painfully with my one that got <laughs> The one that got away story, here we go. But, um, yeah, I did lose a real big eel at the net that um, I was using a, a 50 pound abrasive braid for my hook link. Right. And I think the constant turning and the seesaw and then when they swim backwards, it just bit through it as we were trying yeah. to bumble it in the net. And, Oh, I wouldn't like to say how oh, big I thought it that, was. But, that um, nerve, that so, nerve uh, twinger, that <laughs> I'm going to dig at that later <laughs> while we're waiting for a bite. No, that's good. You've, you've had your own life experience. You've changed it and you've bettered your rig for that. And then this uh, last little bit of your rig I want to touch on. Uh, for me personally, catch them accidentally, other people as well. They always swallow it so deep. Deep hooking eels is so common. Yeah. But you've got a little sort of tea bar to try and combat that? Yeah, so I'm trying the best I can not to deep hook them. So where I've crimped a single hook on the end of my section of wire, yep. I've covered the crimp and just the other hook with a section of shrink tubing, yep. pierced a little hole in the end of the shrink tubing, and then I put a little T-bar of a sort of 25 pound stiff rig yeah, yeah. type mono, and you can just squeeze it through the hole that you've made in the shrink tubing, steam your shrink tubing to grip it in place, trim it up and blob each end so you have a little T-bar above your hook. And this means when the eel takes the bait, it can only get it as far yeah. as that little You can almost bar. feel it going to stop it, on you? If, if it gets me the odd dropped run because they feel it, it feels a bit unnatural, so be it. But if I catch a real big eel, I don't want to feel I'm no. deep. No, I'd be, I'd be 100% with you on that one. And then lastly, I guess we should talk at your favourite baits and sort of where, where you put them. Yeah, I've got two baits for eels that I always go to. One is um, trusty old lobworms. Yep. Um, the little trick that I've been doing this summer a bit more is I hair rig them on the, I'm always using a wire trace, I've got a soft hair with a little quick stop coming yeah, off the I'll hook. Yeah, I've hair rigged worms, yeah, So good. chop your lob worm into sections and yep. hair rig those sections. A, I think it leaks out a lot more flavours. Yeah, yeah. And it stops, if you put a whole lob worm on a hook, it wraps all around the hook. Yeah, so they you, stay on really well with quick stop. Yeah, and they? you yeah. can cast them quite a long way and they don't burst off the hook when they hit the water. Nice. The other go-to bait is, is little fresh dead baits. Yep. Uh, generally coarse dead baits, little roach, little rud. Um, I quite like cutting them in half. I think like the worms, it leaks out the flavours more. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, sometimes put some dead maggots out as well to draw yeah. the eels in. But I normally start off with good intentions, fishing really neat over a bed of dead maggots. And then as the night goes on and you get more and more tired, <laughs> I end up, give just, up a bit. <laughs> I, I give up on the maggots. And you can, like I said earlier, when they're looking for food, yeah. as long as you're in the area, if you just cast out those little dead baits or them worms, they will find it. Yeah. They're incredible hunters. Yeah, I do like the sound of it. And like you said, rods are out, aren't they? You've put a couple of little beds of maggots out, worms on one, a uh, little dead bait on the other. So you're all ready and set. Yeah. The weather, I'm sure, is going to get me wet. It looks like it's going to be thundering, raining, and if it does, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> but I think I'd let you off if you catch us a big eel, because I've not seen a really big eel or even anything sort of over bootload size for an awful long while. So if you can persuade me to eel fish, <laughs> I'm sure other people will be persuaded as well. So that's your target. That's what you've got to do. We're going to settle down now. We've probably got, what, an hour an till hour it gets till, dark? Till the magic time. The witching hour, as people call it. It normally is with eel fishing. As it gets dark, they, they come out on the hunt, don't they? So hopefully, as this light fades, Phil's going to catch us an eel. So true to form, just as this light level's dropped, Phil, the little worm rod has clipped out and Phil's caught himself an eel. <laughs> so now he's going to show you a bit of free formation <laughs> eel wrestling. <laughs> this is all over to you, mate. I'm not touching it, but they are quite hard to hold. So try and see if you can hold it up for us. But it's worth a mention while Phil's going to do that. We've got a cradle here. Save you chasing them all around the bank. If you're going to try and catch an eel, get yourself a cradle, keep them there. And then any tips to try and hold them up, Phil? Um, well, I'm probably going to build myself up for a big fall here, but if you're gentle with them and you don't grip them tightly, they're normally... Almost trick them Not in. too Look bad. That. That's disappointing, that. <laughs> but I want to if see you wrestle him. If, you don't, oh. if you're don't, if you not too aggressive with them, normally they'll play ball a That's little bit. That's mega, that. I was expecting him to be twisting around your arm and all sorts. You got away <laughs> with that one. But they are... Oh, I'm going to touch him. They are prehistoric creatures. They are... I mean, how old do you reckon a fish like that uh, would be? That's got to be... 20, 25 years old, I'd have thought. Yeah, that is mental. Like, so many people wouldn't know they're even in here. I think you spoke to a, 
a chap earlier carp fishing he said there's didn't even realize there was eels in here and <laughs> his exact words i hope i don't catch one <laughs> so <laughs> but uh that's good though because it's left you the chance to come and catch him and this is probably the best behaved eel i've ever yeah, seen well. in my life <laughs> we've got a little uh, retention tube so we'll pop them in there and hopefully as this light fades we might even be able to catch a slightly bigger one for an ending as the clock strikes just past midnight and the rain starts to fall. Phil, you've put three eels on camera for us. We've got these two here, which are pretty well trained actually at the moment. I can't believe you're holding <laughs> oh, one. I know, I can't believe you convinced <laughs> me to. But as I, I've actually really enjoyed it. And for someone who's not targeted eels, you've probably inspired me to get a bit of gear and see if I can go out and catch a few myself. But I'll. I'll see if we can hold the other one up. I've never held one, <laughs> one before, and now I'm going to go for two. Mm. Oh, look at that. Oh, this now one's I'm, trained as well. This one's getting a bit anxious now. <laughs> but don't. it's been... Here they go. Oh, that one's gone as well. <laughs> but there we go. But a real good afternoon into the evening, and certainly as the summer nights now are nice and warm, eels are the one to go out and target. So if you've not been out there and done it already, get yourself out there and see if you can catch yourself one of these rather exciting creatures. <laughs> 